Hello, I'm David Wesley, and I'm here as a wildlife biologist and as a fellow hunter and a conservationist to share with you some facts and concerns associated with chronic wasting disease. This malady is known on the street and in hunter circles simply as CWD. CWD is a contagious neurological disease of mule deer, white-tailed deer, elk, and moose that produces small holes in the brains of the infected animals. CWD is similar to mad cow disease in cattle and scrapie in sheep. Fortunately, unlike mad cow disease, there is no evidence that CWD can be transferred to humans. My first personal experience with CWD occurred when I was a doctorate student at Colorado State University some 35 years ago. At the research facility where I was doing work on pronghorn antelope, the mule deer in the neighboring pen began to show some really peculiar symptoms. They were staggering and drooling. They showed signs of extreme thirst. Their ears drooped and their coats were rough. They maintained an unusually wide stance and were generally lethargic and listless. They went off feed and seemed, in general, to be just wasting away until they finally died. Little did I know at the time that I was witnessing the first documented case of CWD, a disease that was officially diagnosed some 10 years later thanks to the research efforts of people like Beth Williams. Let's listen to what Beth has to say on the subject. Okay, there's no evidence that chronic wasting disease is transmissible to people, and that's based on epidemiologic investigations that have been done by the public health agencies and Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And they've been investigating chronic wasting disease and, and looking at the areas where CWD occurs, and they don't see any link between CWD and any disease that occurs in people. But you have to understand that um, just because we don't have any evidence doesn't mean that it's impossible for that to happen. And so because of that, um, recommendations are that people be um, prudent in how they um, handle chronic waste and disease um, uh, where they hunt. If they uh, hunt in areas where chronic waste and disease occurs, they can uh, take some simple precautions like avoiding hunting animals uh, or uh, harvesting animals that are in poor body condition or um, don't look like they're acting normally. Um, they can also have their animals tested. Um, they can avoid contact with the brain and spinal cord, which is where the highest uh, titer of the uh, agent occurs. And so there's some really easy kind of common sense things that can be done to reduce risk that we don't even know that there's a risk, but it, it pays to be prudent, I think. Today, CWD is a significant wildlife management issue that has impacted hunters, wildlife agencies, and hunting regulations. This is exactly why it is our objective to provide you with the information, knowledge, and skill to feel confident and enjoy your hunt, even in a CWD area and to help you do your part to minimize the possibility of unknowingly spreading CWD into new areas. And we're going to share important facts that all hunters need to know, including information concerning state transportation regulations. But mostly, our objective is to help you understand that this is a disease that requires that we work together to control and eliminate. Let's get started. I think it's obvious. The person that has the correct tools gets the job done better, quicker, and easier. The items you need for the entire process are some latex or rubber gloves, a good sharp boning knife, a diamond edge sharpening steel to keep your knife from getting dull during the process, a rope if you plan on hanging the animal, some plastic bags to place the meat on, which are handy because they fit in your back pocket. A saw to cut the head off for testing. Several big game bags. And a good pack for the possibility of packing the meat out. Okay, you have the proper tools. Before we get into the boning process, let's discuss some of the simple safety measures you should take when field dressing and skinning your animal. The first precaution you want to take is to always wear latex or rubber gloves. Just a good common sense thing to do. Next, 
it's good to know what the diseased parts of the animal are and where they're located. Current evidence indicates that the CWD infective agent, referred to as the prion, is concentrated in the neurologic, which is the brain and nervous system, and lymphatic tissue, commonly referred to as lymph nodes. Therefore, you want to avoid as much as possible the eyeballs, brain, spinal column, spleen, lymph nodes. Avoid these areas during the entire field preparation process. Now, that's really all the recommended precautions for field dressing and skinning your animal. Next, let's discuss why it's good to know how to bone out your animal. That's a good question. Why should you want to bone out your animal? Well, first off, in a 2004 study, it was proven that CWD can be spread to risk-prone animals indirectly from environments contaminated by excreta from infected animals or decaying infected carcasses. It's been long suspected, but now there's proof. Now, because of this, there are a growing number of states that have adopted some form of carcass transportation regulations, which prohibit hunters from transporting whole deer and elk carcasses into their states. These regulations are being adopted to minimize the possibility of spreading the disease to new areas. Refer to the CWD facts section of this CD to get more specific information on these regulations. Okay, we know state transportation regulations are a factor. What other reasons are there to bone out your animal? Well, boning out the carcass minimizes the possibility that a hunter could contaminate the meat with spinal tissue or fluid containing prions if the animal is infected. And did you know that boning out the meat as opposed to sawing through the bone can produce the best quality cuts because sawing tends to spread bone marrow under the surface of the meat, causing it to spoil quicker. The bone marrow can also create an unpleasant off-taste at the table. And finally, boning out has several other advantages, including reduced amount of weight to pack out of the woods, reduced volume of carcass to transport back home in an ice chest, and less weight and less cost if you choose to have the meat commercially processed. All in all, it's a good thing to know. So, let's learn how simple it is to bone out your animal. Okay, we're finishing up skinning one side. We still have our rubber gloves on. And we're getting ready to bone out this side of our animal. First, we laid out our plastic bag to keep everything clean. There. Now we're ready to go. We're going to start with the rear quarter. With your sharp knife, simply follow the line of tissue that lies between this group of muscles. It appears as a line of fat, but most of it is sinew, a tough silvery material. Our instructor simply lets this silvery line guide his knife. The good thing about boning out your animal is that you really can't do it incorrectly. Your first time, you might leave a little meat on the bone or not make the cuts perfectly, but don't sweat it. Try to get as much meat as you can, but if you leave a little bit, the coyotes or other scavengers will be happy to take the free meal. Okay, lift the leg and brace it along the side of your torso as he did here. Sometimes you have to do a little cleanup of any excess skin or tissue that can get in the way. But always remember to leave proof of sex, which we'll be illustrating later. Work from the underside, cutting along the bone from the pelvic area. There are three different muscle groups in this section. By following the natural line in the muscles, you'll be able to cut the meat into prime steaks when you're ready to do so. Keep cutting away until you can pull all three muscle groups off together. You can also take them off separately if it's easier for you to do so. There are many ways to bone out an animal. All of them are effective, but this is the best way to preserve the prime cuts in the meat. Taking all three muscle groups off at once limits the amount of mistakes you can make with your knife. 
The cuts are less and the mistakes are less. In the end, this will allow you to get more prime cuts out of your deer or elk. It's that simple. There, red, lean meat from the area known as the round. The round makes good roasts or steaks. Take the cuts and put them aside onto your clean surface. Keep the meat out of the dirt and leaves by setting it on a clean plastic bag or tarp. Next, cut the meat away from the bone on the lower leg area just below the knee joint. This is referred to as the shank. The shank makes good hamburger or stew meat. Again, simply follow the natural line along the bone. Back to our hunter. Notice he doesn't leave any of the tendon attached to the meat. Tendon can cause some serious problems in the grinder. There, some good meat for hamburger. Finally, move to the rump area above the round and cut the section just below the backbone. This is the sirloin area on beef and makes for good steaks or roasts. Brace the animal with your knee to get more leverage. You need to cut down to the bone to get all the prime meat in this area. It's a pretty thick cut of meat. Just keep cutting away along the bone until all the meat is separated. There, a good piece of red, lean meat that can be used for steaks or roasts. If you're not taking the meat or game directly home or to your processor and you're going back to camp, you can also take the back quarter off at the joint by simply severing the tendons that keep the joint together. You're not cutting through the bone, so this is an acceptable procedure. Again, wear latex or rubber gloves. If it's cold, then wear your latex or rubber gloves under or over an old pair of knit gloves that are disposable. Whatever works. Simply locate the joint on the inside of the back leg and cut the tendons to separate the leg at the joint as our hunter is doing here. Let's get a little closer. That's all there is to it. You can then cool the quarter back in camp and separate the meat from the bone on the tailgate of your truck. It's amazing how easy the meat comes off the bone when it's been cooled. This is an easier process and you're still not having to remove the bones from the field, which, again, is the recommendation in a CWD designated area. Regardless what method you use in removing the meat from the rear quarter, you must always be capable of showing proof of sex by keeping evidence attached as you see here. Always refer to the corresponding state regulations for specifics on proof of sex in the area you'll be hunting.